the presentation of group one. And the topic that is assigned to us is the fundamentals of friction and wear. So for the content of this presentation, first is the introduction of our team. Next is the history of tribology and under that are the fields of friction and wear. Next is the tribology principles and last is the principles for selection of bearing types. And this is our team or the members of the group. So the subtopics that will be discussed for this presentation is the history of tribology, tribology principles, principles for selection of bearing types. So first, let us discuss about the history of tribology. And here is Kisha Jimmy Asido to discuss this subtopic. Good morning. I am here to discuss the about tribology. The word tribology is derived from the Greek word tribos meaning robbing and in other words tribology literally is the science of robbing. Tribology is de defined as the study of the science and, te and technology of interacting surfaces in relative motion which entails the study as well as application of friction where lubrication of interacting surfaces and related aspects in designing. In general, this field encompasses mechanical, chemical, and material technology. The majority of tribology operations involve reducing wear and friction to conserve energy, promote faster movements, boost productivity, and demand less maintenance. Therefore, Tribological research or breakthroughs in tribological approaches are a key to a society's ability to be sustainable, economically successful, and have a high quality of life. Next book. History of Tribology In ancient times, for about 500,000 BC, early humans used the idea of using friction to start a fire by rubbing two pieces of wood together. One of the early ways of reducing heat or fire was through friction. Next book. For around 3,500 BC, the wheel was invented after we learned the idea that rolling motion required less effort than sliding. The first wheel that was discovered during an archaeological excavation is from Mesopotamia and dates to approximately 3,500 BC. Next book. Many advances in the field of tribology were made during the early stages of civilization. Around 2400 BC, with the use of stone sockets, lubricants to lessen friction, and various surface materials to lessen wear, water, mud, and rendered sheep or cow fat are considered possible lubricants. The picture shows the transportation of an Egyptian. The 
picture shows the transportation of an Egyptian statue to the grave of Tehutihetep, which indicates that ancient Egyptians already used the concept of lubrication. The picture depicts slaves are dragging a large statue along sand or ground. One man standing on the sledge supporting the statue pours a liquid liquid oil or water as a lubricant in order to reduce friction between sledge and ground or sand next po In 1400 BC, it was discovered that Egyptians lubricated chariot axles with animal fats or tallow. Approximately between 900 BC and 400 AD, the Greeks and Romans made important discoveries in lubrication, components for machines, and theories of friction and wear. Additionally, vegetable and animal oil were added to the list of lubricants. These innovations include the use of Archimedes gears and roller bearings for rotating platforms on Roman ships. Nineteen forty five to nineteen fifty loss of friction were developed. In nineteen forty five, Leonardo da Vinci formulated the two basic laws of friction. Friction is independent of contact area and friction is proportional to load. Leonardo da Vinci was keen on the significance of friction in the operation of machines and how friction affects efficiency. He focused on friction of all forms and made a distinction between sliding and rolling friction. He stated that friction has a constant correlation Friction resistance is directly proportional to the applied load and friction is independent of the contact area. Next po. In studying and formulating the fundamental laws of friction, Sir Isaac Newton stated that moving friction was independent of speed or velocity, leading to the creation of the third law of friction. These observations were all made on a macro scale. Guillaume Amontos, a French physicist, rediscovered the basic law of friction. He reasoned that wear and the formation of the surfaces were caused by the work done by lifting one surface over the roughness of the other. After Amontos' discovery, scientists believe friction was due to the surface roughness for several centuries. Next book. The second law of friction, as proposed by Charles August Colum, states that strength due to friction is proportional to compressive force. Although friction does not follow exactly this law for large bodies, the work mentioning the amontons was published by Colum. The amontons Colum law is the second law of friction, which was developed by the two scientists in 1699 and 1785, respectively. In 1950, David Tabor and F. Philip Bowden provided a physical justification for the principles of friction. 
they discovered that the true area of contact only makes up a small percentage of the apparent contact area. The irregularities form the true contact area. As the normal force increases, more asperities come into contact and the average area of each asperity contact grows. As our understanding of interaction processes has developed, we are discovering that the macro laws necessarily don't apply and that the processes of interaction are quite complex. The frictional force was shown to be dependent on the true contact area, a much more intuitively satisfying argument than what the Amonton's column law allows. Bowden and T Bowden and Tabor argued that within these asperities, all of the dynamics of friction take place. Amonton's law of friction Amonton's law of friction are the first quantitative description of a tribological process. Attempts, theories, mechanisms, models, to explain this loss have been central to the development of, of tribology. Stated by Bill Needleman of Filtration Science Solutions. This picture shows the Beauchamp Tower. In 1883, the elucidation of hydrodynamic lubrication began in Ireland with testing done by Beauchamp Tower. He used a special specially constructed test rig for journal bearings <clears throat> simulating the conditions found in railway axle boxes. In, in the final phase of his research, Tower decided to drill an oil feed hole in the bearing. The oil was found to rise upwards in the feed hole and an elaborated hole in the bearing. The oil was found to rise upwards in the feed hole and leak over the top of the bearing cap. He then installed a pressure gauge and found it to be inadequate for measuring the high pressure levels. This result proved that the existence of a fill, fluid film that could carry significant loads. Next book. In 1886, Osborne Reynolds pub published an important differential equation describing, describing the, dis the increase in oil pressure in the narrow converging gap between journal bearing surfaces. This equation, a variation of the Navier-Stokes equations resulting in a second-order differential equation, was so complicated that it, that it took a while to solve for journal bearings. In 1902, Richard Strebeck, a German scientist and engineer, developed the Strebeck curve as a plot of friction in relation to viscosity, speed, and load. Arnold Sommerfeld improved the ideas proposed by the work of Tower and Reynolds. About 1905, the work became formally recognized as a theory of hydrodynamic lubrication. A 
Australian engineer George Michel invented fluid film thrust bearings and published them in 1905. Michel bearings contain a number of sector-shaped pads arranged in a circle around the shaft and which are free to pivot. Michel's invention was notably applied to the thrust block of propeller driving ships. Their small size, one-tenth the size of all bearing designs, low friction and long life enable the development of more powerful engines and propellers. That's all po for the history of friction. I try biology po. Now let us proceed uh, discussing the friction. When we throw a ball on the floor, it starts moving with some velocity, but ideally no force should be acting in the direction of motion. And according to Newton's first law, the ball should keep rolling, but th this does not happen. Instead, the ball stops after moving a certain distance, so a force must be acting on it. So yung force na yun, tinatawag natin na friction. Friction is the force that hinders or resists the relative motion of the two contacting bodies. Friction originates from complex molecular and mechanical interactions between the contacting surface. So, yung friction, siya yung resistance na ino-offer ng surfaces that are in contact when they move past to each other. Meron tayong uh, mga factors na nakaka-affect sa friction. Una ay yung on the nature of the two surfaces that are in contact. And second is on the, on the force that is acting on these surfaces. So for the first factor, uh, ang friction, dependent siya sa smoothness and roughness ng dalawang surfaces na in contact with each other. So when the surface is smooth, the friction between the two reduces as there is not much interlocking of irregularities. While the surfaces is rough, friction increases. And the second factor naman, friction increases when the force is applied along the irregularities. Um, friction formula. Frictional force is directly proportional to the load. Therefore, ang um, force natin is equals to mu times N. So, friction is commonly represented by the coefficient of friction mu. The coefficient of friction is a unitless ratio where F represents the frictional force experienced by two contacting bodies in motion and P represents the load pressing the same two bodies together. So, familiar naman tayo dito sa formula ng friction since na-encounter na natin siya sa uh, previous courses natin. So, we have different types of friction. First type is the static friction. So, ang static friction is the friction present between two or more objects that are moving with respect to each other. Static friction opposes motion in an object at rest. It is a self-adjusting force and adjusts itself to match the applied force. A certain minimum amount of force or yung limiting friction is required to overcome the static friction. So, yung static friction, nag apply siya kapag yung two surfaces ay hindi gumagalaw. The resistance provided by static friction means that a certain amount of force must be applied to overcome it and make things move. So, kung yung force na, na, na nandun sa surfaces ay hindi nag-exceed dun sa force of static of friction, meaning walang mangyayari na movement. And so, meron tayo static friction formula din. F sub S is equals to mu sub S times N. So, yung F sub S is yung force of static friction natin. Yung US is the coefficient of static friction. 
while n is the normal force. So, meron tayo dito uh, examples of static friction. So, una ay yung stone on the ground. A stone resting on the ground will not move unless acted upon by some force. So, even the slightest wind cannot push it. It is due to the static friction with the ground. Even if the stone is on a slope, the static friction will keep the stone at rest. Static friction is dependent on the mass of the object. So, the heavier the stone, the tougher it will be to move it. Another example is the nail on the wall. A nail is able to hold onto a wall or a wooden plank due to the friction between the wall and the nail. The value of limiting factor Friction is very high. That is why when trying to move or to remove a nail, we have to struggle. The static friction will adjust itself to match the applied force till it exceeds the limiting friction. Ah, hello po. Ah, uh, tawag dito. Hello, so. Okay. Pakain ako. Pakain ako. Yes po. So, ayun. So, bale. Ano ba? Bale. Um, thank you sa group one. Or may dadagdag pa sila ako. Kasi medyo mabilis. Sir, hindi pa po tapos. Nag-shutdown daw po ang PC nung nagpe-present. Ah, nag-shutdown. Okay, akala ko yan. Sige, sige. Wait na lang ko na natin. Ma medyo matagal pa ba yan? Opo, sir. Mahaba-haba okay. pa po. Okay, akala ko yan na eh. 
सकती है And sorry for the interruption. Po, namatay lang ang please. So, uh, next, uh, next example. So another example is a car park on a slope. Another type of friction is the kinetic friction and here is Althea may be allowed to discuss this type of friction. So yun, let's proceed to another type of friction, which is kinetic friction. So kinetic friction is defined as a force that acts between moving surfaces. A force acting in the opposite direction of the movement of a body on the surface is experienced. 
the coefficient of kinetic friction between the two materials will determine the magnitude of the force. So we all know that friction is easily defined as the force that holds back a sliding object. So yung kinetic friction is part of everything and ini-interfere niya yung motion ng dalwa or higit pang objects. So yung force na nag act sa opposite direction ng object ay once mag-slide. So for example, if yung sasakyan is gusto tumigil or mag-stop, nag apply tayo ng brake and doon nagiging present yung friction. And another type, and another example is while walking, if gusto din nating mag-stop or tumigil kasi may gagawin tayo, dun din, ang, dun din ang yayari yung friction. Next. Next po. So yun, we have the kinetic friction formula. The coefficient of kinetic friction is denoted by the Greek letter mu with a subscript k. The force of kinetic friction is mu k times the normal force in a body. It is expressed in newtons. The kinetic friction equation can be written as force of kinetic friction is equal to coefficient of kinetic friction times normal force. Where yung fk is the force of kinetic friction, yung mu k is coefficient of kinetic friction, and n is yung normal force. Next po. So yun, we have applications of kinetic friction. Una is friction is a major factor in everyday activities like rubbing two objects together. In some cases, the heat produced by the resulting motion eventually ignites a fire. So... Yon, if lahat ay familiar doon sa buhay na bato, na pag nirarab natin siya, na, nakakagawa tayo ng apoy. So the frictional force created when two items rub against one another is transformed into thermal energy, occasionally igniting a fire. And machine parts wear and tear due to kinetic friction, hence it's crucial to lubricate the machine parts with oil. So, yan, we also have loss of kinetic friction. First is, it always reduces the speed of the object in motion. Second, it acts in the direction opposite to force applied. And last is, it is independent of the surface area of contact, design, and velocity. Another type of friction is the rolling friction. So, rolling friction is a force that opposes the motion of a rolling object on a surface. Rolling friction is also known as the rolling resistance. So, ang example niya is yung rolling of the log on the ground and wheels of the moving vehicles. The main reason for this friction is that deformation requires more energy than recovery does. Additionally, a steady effort must be made to, con to counteract an adhesive force that exists between the two surfaces. The amount of friction depends on a variety of factors including the sliding's body's quality, the surface quality, the load, the object's diameter when it's rolling, and the body's surface area. So we also have the rolling friction formula. Determining the coefficient of this friction is considerably more complex than that of sliding friction. Coefficient of rolling friction is the ratio of the force of rolling friction to the total weight of the object. In empirical terms, the coefficient of rolling resistance can be expressed as Fr equals mu R W or yung N, which is the normal force of the rolling body, where Fr is the resistive force of rolling resistance, mu R is the coefficient of rolling resistance, and W is the weight of the rolling body, or N, which is the normal force of the rolling body. Some causes of rolling friction is that the location of contact with the surface, the object is deformed. 
at the location of contact with the object, yung surface naman yung magde-deform. So the aforementioned points cause the motion to be formed below the surface. So we also have the rolling friction examples. First is rolling friction causes a basketball to gradually come to a stop when it is rolled on the court. Due to higher rolling friction, a bike with a wide tire will use more fuel. Last is because there is more rolling friction in a field than on a concrete floor, a ball rolling on the former surface will travel less distance. And here's the last type of friction to be discussed by Robert Canino. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, sliding friction is the resistance that any two items produce as they slide against one another. This friction is sometimes referred to as kinetic friction and it is the force required to keep one surface moving along one another. The material and the object's weight are the two factors that determine this. The sliding friction is unaffected by changes in the surface area in contact. Next book. So here's the formula for sliding friction. The equation of the sliding force includes the coefficient of the sliding friction times the normal force, where Fs is the force of sliding friction, the mu s is the coefficient of sliding friction, and n is the normal force. Next book. Factors affecting sliding friction. Um, there are five factors that affect sliding friction. The first one is the surface deformation of objects. Next is roughness or smoothness of the surface of the objects. Next one is original speed of either object, the size of the object, the amount of pressure on either object. Next book. Here are some examples of sliding friction, rubbing both hands together to produce heat, a child sliding down through a slide, a block being slid through the floor, and cards sliding against each other. Next. Where? Next. Where is the process that occurs when two solid surfaces are sliding or rolling against one another? Um, and involves the removal of material from one or both of the solid surfaces. It is the gradual surface degradation, including material loss that develops as a result of component moving in relation to nearby functional components. So that's um, some introduction for sa where and um, so other kinds of wares are or will be presented by Carlo Catapang and Japet De Luna. Yes, good morning everyone. For the desk desk is also known as galling or scuffing occurs when two sliding surfaces come into direct contact and adhere to each other due to the molecular forces. A decibel wear is a type of wear that is caused on the surface of two materials that are sliding contacts due to the large atomic bonding forces at the surface in comparison to the surrounding area of the material. The, the strong atomic bonding at the surface initiate the removal of the material from one of the surface due to the higher strength in the bonding. This is the most common type of wear which is characterized by high wear, rage, and friction on the surface. The failure in the lubrication on the surface causes the contact in the sliding surface interface, resulting in the, in the high adhesion and leading to adhesive wear. So, balik po sa kapag daw po merong dalawang bagay na nagko-contact each other or nagkikiskisan, Kumbaga, can create, initiate contact, intimate contact, sorry, intimate contact na, na the two material can result in surface damage. So, halimbawa po, kapag 
ilagay po natin sa mechanical engineering. Halimbawa po sa makina na sasakyan, aware naman po tayo na ang makina po na sasakyan is may piston. So, bali po ang trabaho po ng piston is taas baba, taas baba lang po siya sa ating sa ating engine block. And ang ilalim po ng ating engine block is meron po tayong tinatawag na engine oil. So, bali po ang trabaho po ng engine oil is uh, na ang trabaho po ng engine oil is tumulong sa piston para po gumana po ito ng smooth. So, bali po pag nawala po yung engine oil is maaari pong mag po yung ating piston at yun nga po, madadamage po yung ating engine block. So, bali po ang layunin po ng ating adhesive wear is sa pag-unawa ng adhesive wear, may iwasan ang mga ganong pangyayari. Kaya may meron tayong mga tinatawag na lubrication, lub, lubricant or yun nga po mga, mga oil. And tulad din, na, tulad din ng mga bearing, so kailangan din ng ng lubricant or grasa para gumana ito ng maayos. Next po. Number three is abrasive wear. Abrasive wear occurs when hard particles or abrasive substances such as sand, grit, or debris come into contact with the softer material and cause the removal of material from the softer surface. Abrasive wear is the type of wear mechanism that results in the disintegration of the material on the surface due to the influence of the hard particle in the contact with the surface. It also occurs when a hard surface of, or particles interact or slide in the soft surface and cause material loss. This is a type of wear that occurs due to the loading of solid particle on the surface of the material which is having hardness that is equal or lesser compared to the loaded particle. Kung sa adhesive wear po is um, kailangan ng lubricant para hindi po madamage yung mga bagay, dito naman po sa, sa abrasive, abrasive wear is tuma, tumutukoy sa mismong nangyayaring damage sa mga bagay. So ang halimbawa po dyan is kunyari po nasa disyerto po tayo. Tapos nagkaroon po ng sandstorm. So, tapos nakasakay po tayo sa sasakyan. Alam naman po natin na pag sandstorm po is nakaka-apekto po ito sa sasakyan. And once po na, na yung mga buhangin po is tumama na sa sasakyan, doon na po nangyayari yung abrasive wear. Dahil nadadamage po ng, ng sand yung atin pong pintura ng mga sasakyan. Dahil po gamit po yung mga abrasibong, abrasibong particle galing sa sand na magkisilbing ab abrasibong tool para po makadamage sa ating mga sasakyan. And para po sa sunod po is si Japet na po ang magpapaluanan. Um, good morning po. Sa so, ang sunod na pong type ng wear po ay corrosive wear. Corrosive wear is a type of wear in which the material surface gets disintegrated due to the chemical reaction between the material surface and the corroding medium, which can be either a chemical agent, lubricants, or atmospheric mediums. So yun po, corrosive wear, from the word corrosive, alam naman na ito po ay dahil sa alawang at nagkakaroon nito dahil po sa mga ilang factor gaya ng lubricant at or mga chemical na nasa loob ng gear at higit sa lahat po yung environment na kung saan nakalagay or nakapesto. Halimbawa po nito yung mga bubong po, mga pako po na nasa tabing dagat po, mga bahay po doon. Madali po itong mga lawang dahil po nasa may presence po ng tubig at Salt po. Next po. Ang last pong type ng wear ay erosive wear. <laughs> erosive wear is a type of wear in which material degradation takes place due to the impact of external particles, either solids or liquids, on the surface of the material. The erosive wear can also be expressed as the destruction or the damage of, on the surface of the material 
when an object impinges at a very high velocity. <laughs> sa erosive wear naman po, ang dahilan ng pagkasira ng mga surface ng gears or parts ay yung mga debris or external particle na pumasok or tumama dun sa surface. Siyempre po, kapag in motion po ito, may force po itong kasama, kaya po nagdudulay ito ng pagkasira ng surface ng material. <laughs> at may iba't iba pong types ng erosive wear, at ito po ay ang mga sumusunod. Next po. Um, ito po ang dalawang unang types, uh, abrasion po, ito po ay high speed, eh, ay high, high angle, tas ah, mali yung tanga sa, ito po yung mga following po, next po. Ito po yung fatigue and plastic dis deformation. Ang sunod na topic na po ay principles of tribology at i-discuss po ito ni DJ po. Magandang umaga po. Ang unang po natin tribology principle na po ay dry sliding po. Dry sliding is the force that opposes one solid surface sliding across another solid surface. Dry sliding always opposes the surfaces sliding relative to one another. And it can have the effect of either opposing motion or causing motion in bodies. Dry sliding wear occurs when two surfaces slide over each other. Sliding wear on the surface of light alloy components occurs in two ways. Abrasive wear happens when there are two hard particles between the two surfaces. These particles scrape or plug materials from one or both of the surfaces causing material loss. Ang halimbawa po ito po ay, na ito po natin sa picture po na may tumatulak na karton. Tapos sa ilalim po ng karton yung contact po ng karto, yung karton sa sahig po. Kapag dinutulak po natin, may, may friction po na or may sliding po nagkakos. Pero ang sliding po yan, yung walang mga rollers or support para matulak ng madali, yan ay papahirapan po. Parang dry lang po. Kaya dry, dry sliding po kung saan walang mga rollers or papang support pang tulak na madali itulak ang karton po. Tapos po ay, ito po ay surface flake, surface films at asperity contacts between rubbing surfaces po. Next po. Ang sunod po ang tribology principles po ay fluid fil fil film lubrication. Fluid film lubrication is the lubrication regime in which there are continuous fluid, fluid film separation solid surfaces with the characteristic that the external load on the solid surfaces is fully supported by the pressure generated with the fluid film, a load super, super, super <coughs> supporting pressure is commonly generated by one of the following types of action. Sa fluid film lubrication, mga ito po natin sa mga makanya po ng masasakyan or mga machine po. Kung saan po nagpapatulong po sa para hindi masira ang makanya po, para tuloy-tuloy po ang paggamit sa kanya. Para may longevity of the machine para hindi magkakos ng problema sa production or sa paggamit po. Tapos po, ang iba't ibang types ng fluid film lubrication po ay hydro, hydro, hydrodynamic lubrication. is a term that defines a situation in which two rubbing surfaces are separated by a thin film of lubricant. This situation is often beneficial and lubrication is used to reduce friction or wear of rubbing solids with the aids of liquids or semi-solid lubricants. As what, as pag sina, yung sinabi po kanina ni John Carlo po doon sa po sa makina po ng kotse po, kung saan nilalagay po ng mga engine oil para yung combustion or yung piston para umakanat ng easily para hindi ma-wear down o makakaroon ng sira po sa loob ng makina. Para hanggang tumatagal ang gamit, tumatagal din ang longevity ng makina po para hindi ma-cause ng problema sa may-ari po. Tapos po yung another example po, yung combustion po, combustion po ng sa makina po para easy flow lang sila po. Next po. Another type is fluid film lubrication. The, the squeeze film has great importance for enhancing transport process in energy system like turbo machinery, this, this clutches, and vicious lock system. Ang, ang example po dito, parang doon sa, sa preno po, sa sasakyan, or sa clutch po. Kung saan madali, ipasok po kapag may clutch fluids po. Papatulong po para mapasok sa first gear, second, third, fourth, fifth, that's reverse po. Para hindi mahirapan po. Tapos mag-brake fluids naman para magan pagtapakan po ang preno, ang brake pedal po. 
Tapos sa sa diagram po, makita po natin yung tatlo. Tatlong example po. Una is yung hydrodynamic, tapos squeeze flame at yung external. Tapos mga load po sa bearings po niyan po. Next po. The last type of tribolic, the last type of fluid film lubrication is external pressured. Externally pressured bearings are, as the name suggests, supplied with a source of pressure that supports the load. They are used in many precision machine tiles with great success, but wide application is limited, often by the extra power consumption associated with the pumping power that has to be provided. Example po tayo yung mga hydro po, yung nag hydro squasher po yung nagpipirat po yun ang po mga example po atas mga pagpal yung mga jumper po may maram po external expression na tumotol ng paangate ng kotse po Tap tapos yun mga tas sa diagram po mga bearing type po tas mga flu mga pressure na sa isang sa isang bearing type po tapos ang next po mag ang next po ay mag say dong ano po salamat po uh, para naman sa elastrohydrodynamic lubrication or EHL, ito yung klase ng hydrodynamic lubrication where the pressure is large enough resulting in the elastic deformation of lubricated surfaces. It is significant for all lubrication since it is applied in various mechanical components gaya ng roller bearings, cam tappet system, flexible seals, at iba pa. So EHL is influenced by these three main factors. Una ay yung elastic deformation of the contacting bodies caused by the applied force. And yung sunod ay yung hydrodynamic action and training lubricant between contacting surfaces. And lastly is yung viscosity variation of the lubricant. Next slide po. Uh, there are two following distinct regimes existing in EHL. So the major factor used to determine whether it is hard or soft EHL is the pressure applied to the lubricant's viscosity, which is essential para sa body's elastic deformation. So, yung hard EHL, yung maximum pressure niya ay uh, nag-reach ng 3 to 4 gigapascal and the minimum thickness of the film is in the range 0 to 1 to 1 micrometer. This type of lubrication is seen mainly in applications like crawling bearings, gears, comes rail wheel contacts and others. Para naman sa soft EHL, in this case, yung maximum pressure is 1 megapascal and due to the low pressure in the interface of the contacts, it does not affect the lubricant's viscosity and yung sa calculation naman ng minim minimum film thickness, hindi na kinoconsider yung pressure viscosity coefficient since it does not vary much. Yung practical applications nito ay sa mga tears, seals, at ibang machinery with rubber or plastic-based lubricated contacts. And lastly, for the tribology principles, ay yung boundary lubrication. Next slide po. Uh, boundary lubrication occurs when a fluid film cannot be formed or sustained due to heavy loads, low running speeds, higher surface roughness, and for the lack of lubricant supply. It is also associated with metal-to-metal -metal contact between two sliding surfaces of the machine. And this involves a single monolayer of lubricant molecules na inaabsorb ng bearing surfaces and inaavoid nito yung surface wear by delaying or preventing the surfaces to contact directly. Next slide po. Sa boundary lubrication, may mga factors na, na nakaka-apekto sa regime nito. Una ay yung surface structures and compositions. Uh, materials undergo a variety of fabrication and manufacturing stages bago sila gamitin in particular ap applications. And during these stages, may mga contaminations na pwedeng maka sa surfaces causing changes sa bonding structures or chemical compositions. Yung sunod naman ay surface roughness. Ito ay isa sa pinakamahalagang parameter sa kahit anong lubrication para sa calculation and thickness of film. And this can be microscopic or macroscopic. Lastly ay yung lubrication. Sa boundary lubrication, the lubricant's effect has no role since there is asperity to asperity or yung 
roughness of manner contacts between the surfaces. Nadidissolve ang lubricant film dahil sa high load at the surface interface na nagkakos ng increase sa friction and wear. Uh, para naman po sa next slide, uh, here is Kin Evangelista. So, our next topic po is principles for selection of bearing types. Common classes of bearings. Ang first po natin is fluid film bearings. Fluid film bearings are machine elements designed to produce smooth, low friction motion between solid surfaces in, rel in relative motion and to generate a load support for mechanical components. The lubricant or fluid between the surfaces may be liquid, a gas, or even a solid. Fluid film bearings, when well designed and operated, are able to support static and dynamic loads and consequently their effects on the performance of rotating machinery are of great importance. So ang fl fluid film bearings nga po ay isang machine elements na ginawa para po makapag-produce ng smooth motion between solid surfaces. Next slide po. In a fluid film bearing, the stationary and rotating surfaces are separated by a thin film of lubricant such as oil, air, water, or processed fluid. In a hydrodynamic fluid film bearing, the film pressure that separates the surfaces is created by the relative motion of the surfaces as the lubricant is pulled into a converging geometry between the surfaces. No contact of the surfaces take place except during start-up and shutdown. So, dun po sa fluid film bearing, wala pong contact na nagaganap except lang po during start-up and shutdown. Next slide po. Ang sunod pong common classes of bearings is the dry bearings. Plain bearings containing solid lubricants are used without any external supply of lubricant. These are called dry bearings. Some marginally lubricated and dry bearings can carry load as high as rolling element bearings and fluid film plain bearings, but they are limited in speed as shown in the figure. So makikita nga po natin sa picture yung pong different types of dry bearings. Our next common class of bearing spot will be discussed by Adrian Liesa. Uh, the next type, the next classes of bearing is the semi-lubricated or the semi-lubricated bearing. So semi-lubricated bearings combine the aspect of both fluid film and dry bearings. They use a solid material that contains a small packet or reservoir for lubrication. So this packet releases uh, lubricant when needed, reducing friction while avoiding the need for constant lubrication. So these, these are they are used in various applications, including the automotive wheel bearing. Mostly, these the semi-lubricated bearing are made of porous material, usually metal. The lubricant, which could be oil or grease, cannot provide a complete fluid film, but usually act as a boundary lubricant. Semi-lubricated semi bearing can carry greater loads at greater speed than dry bearing but not as high, high as either fluid film or rolling element bearing. Next slide. The next class is, is the rolling element bearing. The primary purpose of rolling element bearing is to allow two moving parts to rotate relative to each other with minimal friction and wear. There are three common types of rolling element bearings, which are, next slide. First one is the roll, is the ball bearing. This bearing use small spherical balls to separate the inner and outer races, reducing friction and enabling smooth rotation. There, they are, common, common, uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, 
ang ginamit dito na parang pang yung nasa loob nung pinaka outer at saka inner na parang braces ay bilog kaya siya tinawag na ball bearing they are commonly used in a wide range of application in a wide range of application from automotive wheels to industrial machinery next slide The next step is the roller bearing. So roller bearing use cylindrical or tapered roller instead of balls to support the load. Unlike nung, nas, nung una, yung kanina ang ginamit ay balls, then dito ang ginamit naman is yung pa-cylindrical. Pwede siyang straight roller na kagaya ng nasa first picture and tapered naman kagaya nung nasa pangalawa. So they are often employed in heavy duty application naman such as the conveyor system and large machineries. Next slide. The last type of rolling element bearing is the needle bearing. So needle bearing are a type of roller bearing with long thin cylinders that provide high radial load capacity and compact design. Kagaya lang siya ng uh, roller bearing, ang kinaibahan lang niya is sa design. Kung makikita natin dito sa design na to, para siyang uh, needle or para siyang karayom. They are used naman in application with limited space such as uh, automotive transmission. So the next slide will be presented by Kayla Ramos. Good morning everyone. For this part, we are going to talk about the characteristics of common classes of bearings. Please pay attention to this table. Pwede niyo po siyang screenshot and available din naman siya sa textbook na provided sa ating Google Classroom. So going back to the table, on the first column are the characteristics of the common classes of bearings as discussed earlier, which are the fluid film bearings, dry bearings, semi-lubricated, and the rolling element bearings. This table will be our guide for the comparisons and further discussions. Next slide po. Let us now discuss mechanical requirements for the selection of the most suitable type of bearing. First, we have the friction and power loss. Low starting friction is a prime advantage of ball and roller bearing. This is because they have a very little friction when you start their motion, even there's a heavy load. As we know, kapag may friction, syempre may resistance. At yung quantity ng resistance na yon ay ang tinatawag nating friction coefficient. Makikita po natin to sa table. So yung start of friction is the level of resistance that exists when you begin to move an object or start a machine. For example, may isang box na mabigat sa floor at gusto mo itong itulak from point A to point B. Initially, hindi mo naman agad mamumove yung box, di ba? Kasi nga mabigat. So, kailangan pa natin mag-exert ng additional force or effort para maitulak yung box. So, yung resistance na na-feel mo when you are starting or trying to push the box is called the startup friction. And kapag lower ang startup friction, lesser din yung force na kailangan natin to get something moving. And kapag naman higher, mas challenging para magsimula ng motion. So from table 1.3, rolling element bearing has the lowest startup friction coefficient. So it only needs low or little force to start. Next, externally, hindi. <laughs> Pabalik po sa ano. Externally, pressurized oil lift pockets provide the oil film bearings with zero starting friction in a variety of large and heavy machines such as electric generators, hydroelectric dams, and utility power plants. So paano po ba nag-work yung externally pressurized oil lift pocket? So it works by creating a cushion of pressurized lubricating oil between the moving and stationary component of a bearing. Yung cushion oil na ito ay effective para ma-separate yung mismong surface at mabawasan ang direct contact between the components. Take a look at this picture. Yan po ay isang bearing. Uh, ang bearing is equipped with the lubrication system that supplies oil to the bearing. Within the bearing, may design pockets or chambers known as the externally pressurized lip pocket na nakapwesto between the rotating component like shaft and stationary component like house of the bearing. Yung nakapoint out po sa picture ay yung lifting pockets. 
Then, meron din external pressure source like the pump na connected naman sa leaf pockets. And yung pump ang magpupush sa oil para makarating sa leaf pocket. And kapag naman na-introduce na yung oil sa leaf pockets, it will form a thin film of lubricant between the rotating and stationary component. This film acts as a barrier preventing the metal-to-metal -metal contact. Yung absence ng metal-to-metal -metal contact will reduce the friction between the components resulting to minimal starting friction. And beneficial po yung low friction since it will promote energy efficiency by reducing the amount of power needed to operate the machine. Next When machines are running normally, ball or roller bearing and oil film bearing have low friction around 0.001 to 0.002. Nasa table din po ito. During startup, especially if it uses fluid film bearing or dry bearing, the friction is typically between 0.15 and 0.25. However, kapag nag-start na yung paggalaw nung, nung components, Magda-drop na yung friction by half. For this, based again sa table, fluid film and dry bearings has the highest startup friction coefficient of 0 0.25 and 0 0.15 accordingly. So, ibig sabihin, there is a moderate to relatively high amount of resistance to the initial motion of the machine components. But when it starts moving, yung friction naman ay bababa. So, ibig sabihin, mas bibilis na yung motion ng machine components. And lastly, the heat generated by friction in bearing and gear contact was studied by Block in 1937. This study helps us to understand the limit of how fast and how much load bearing and gears can handle without overheating. That is all for friction and power loss. Po. The next mechanical requirement will be discussed by Chris Santa Rosales. Another mechanical requirement is speed. So pinakitong table kanina ni Kayla, each of those classes of bearings ay mayroong practical limit, practical speed limit. The common practice limits ay yung rolling bearings na gumagamit ng oil lubrication to a value of 500,000 to 1 million, which corresponds to a surface speed of 1,600 to 3,100 meters per minute. Yung mga limits na may fluid film, film bearings, they are much higher and less well-defined but their surface speeds in turbine bearings range up to about 8,700 meter per minute. A typical dental drill uses air, air for journal bearing lubrication while spinning smoothly at speeds of 300,000 RPM. Much lower speed limits in the range of 100 to 500 meters per minute are imposed by surface heating effects with dry and semi-lubricated bearings where yung appropriate operating zone po ay nasa figure in the next slide. Next po. Ayan. An important thing to note then is that one should select a bearing with a limiting speed na mas mataas kesa sa rotational speed in accordance with the operating speed of the machine. If a machine keeps running above the limiting speed of the bearing, tataas ang temperature niya dramatically, which and will potentially cause damage or seizure. Next po. Next mechanical requir requirement is load. A bearing load is defined as the force that's transferred from one bearing ring through some or all the rolling elements to the other bearing ring. Application loads generally transfer to the shaft and then to the bearing's inner ring, then to the outer ring. Yung rolling element bearings are generally more versatile in being able to carry their fatigue-rated load at all speeds from zero pataas at sa lahat ng directions with normal lubrication. Yung load capacity naman ng oil film bearings is more of a function of speed and oils, oil viscosity with their influence on oil film formation. Dry and semi-lubricated porous metal and plastic bearings encounter a surface heating limit in their PV factor, which is contact pressure times surface velocity. It gives much a much lower load limit with rising speed, but high loads are possible with appropriate material combinations at low speed. I'll just add then that 
hydrostatic bearings using externally pressurized oil have been used to support enormous structures such as observatory domes, telescopes, and large radio antennas where weight requirements range from 250,000 to over 1 million pounds. Also, momentary shock loads can be reasonably tolerated by both fluid film and rolling element bearings. Rotor unbalanced loads and cyclic loads in internal combustion engines are well carried by oil film bearings. Combined radial and thrust load capacity is a useful attribute of conventional deep groove single row ball bearings. Yun lang po for the load and the next mechanical requirements po are to be presented by Nino Salazar. Good day everyone. Uh, so I am going to discuss life and lubrication under mechanical requirements of bearing types. So first, let us define life or bearing life or life limit. So bearing life is essentially the length of time a bearing can be expected to perform as required in predefined operating conditions. Uh, it is based primarily on the probable number of rotations a bearing can complete before it starts uh, showing symptoms of fatigue such as spalling. Uh, yung spalling is uh, breaking into smaller pieces or cracking due to stress. So yung fatigue life of an individual bearing uh, is the number of revolutions nga na magagawa ng bearing, uh, bearing operates before the first sign of metal fatigue. So makikita natin yung signs ng metal fatigue sa one of its rings or rolling elements. Uh, next slide. So dito naman makikita natin ang comparison ng items life limits included in table 1.3. Uh, rolling element bearings have a distinct fatigue life limit uh, which results from the repeated contact stressing of the balls and rollers on their raceways. While fluid film bearings in the usual rotating equipment provide essentially unlimited life. Uh, the same life pattern has been found with rolling element and oil film bearings. However, in industrial electric motors where maintenance needs and contamination commonly dictate life. Uh, fatigue life is also a limiting factor for oil film bearings under cyclic loading in internal combustion engines. Uh, on the other hand, in dry and semi-lubricated bearings, life is estimated from a wear coefficient, which relates wear rate to unit loading and peripheral sliding distance. In the rapidly expanding use of this class of bearings, life is also related to temperature, contamination, and other environmental conditions. Uh, next slide. Uh, next one is lubrication. Uh, bearing lubrication is uh, vital for preserving the performance and lifespan of rolling element bearings. Lubrication helps uh, separate moving parts relative to one another such as rollers and raceways or balls to prevent wear and tear and friction. So, na-discuss na to kanina. So, let us go to the next slide for uh, lubrication requirements of bearing types. Uh, in general, a uh, rolling element bearing requires only enough lubricant to provide a film coating over the surface roughness of working surfaces. Less than one drop supplies this need uh, <coughs> for many small and medium-sized ball and roller bearings. So, kalimitan, grease, yung common type of lubricant used for rolling bearing lubrication today. About 90% of all bearings are lubricated in this manner. Uh, next, uh, under, under conditions of heavy load and high speed, uh, additional lubricant must be supplied, not for lubrication needs, but to remove heat and maintain a reasonable limit on temperature. Uh, many rolling elements bearings 
depend only on an initial grease fill for years of operation when DN values are less than 300,000 millimeter bore times, times RPM. Next slide. <coughs> While no oil is usually fed to small sliding type bearings, which are to operate dry or semi-lubricated, uh, oil film bearings generally require relatively large quantities of oil to maintain the separating film between the bearing and its meeting surface. Uh, this feed rate is proportional to the bearing length, width, clearance, and surface velocity and ranges up to 4 cubic meter per minute, uh, 1,000 gallon per minute. For the oil film, bearings uh, in a steam turbine generator at an electric power station. Specially designed fluid film bearings are unique in being able to operate with gas or ambient liquids such as water or gasoline as their hydrodynamic flow. Uh, that's, for, that's all for uh, life and lubrication. So, good morning for everyone. Uh, ang another mechanical requirement for the selection of bearing type is space requirement. So, low profile bearings are dry and semi lubricated. Most frequently, a bushing or thrust washer is made of porous metal plastic or plastic lined bearing. So, ang bushing po or thrust washer, a uh, type of bearing po. Uh, commonly used for machinery with rotating or sliding shafts para improve uh, efficiency and reduce vibration and noise. These bearings have just the right amount of wall thickness to provide them the necessary strength for insertion into a housing that supports them. Ball and roller bearings typically have an outer diameter that is one and a half to three times larger than the bore and an actual dimension that is between one-fifth and half the diameter of the shaft. Next slide, please. So, the environmental conditions. Among the significant environmental elements that must be taken into account are temperature variation, dampness, filth, and corrosive atmospheres. A divine design technique is currently available for each wearing type to satisfy the majority of typical environmental requirements. Designers must take into account additional operating parameters and environmental circumstances that could affect lubricant performance and life in addition to temperature, speed, and loads. Next slide. Please. So the effectiveness of lubricant can also be impacted by water intrusion and particle pollutants. Generally speaking, the temperature range of fluid film bearings is the most constrained. Ball and roller bearings can be customized to satisfy a variety of environmental requirements. Multipurpose breezes and double sealed, double shielded enclosures offer enough rust prevention, water and contaminant resistance, and extended life for general applications to do away with the need for routine maintenance. Tool steel and ceramic bearing materials can also be used in an ever widening range of temperatures and other environmental conditions thanks to the use of synthetic oils and greases. So that's all for, for environmental conditions. Next topic will be discussed by Subol. Next, <clears throat> Next are the economics. Cost, maintenance, and life are the crucial factors to take into consideration. And when choosing a bearing type, the overall economic factors taken into account include not only the initial cost of the bearing, but also subsequent cost for maintenance and eventual re replacement during its functional life. Next, po. First are the cost. Initial cost is frequently a major selection factor in situation when other considerations are not determinant. For a lot of mass-produced things such as tiny electric motors and home appliances, 
For examples are the dry and semi-lubricated bushing and truss, washer or by far, the lowest cost and are seeing steadily, steadily expanding use in bore diameters up to a roughly 25 millimeter. And use for automotive components with a low surface speeds and small loads. Next one is the mass-produced oil film bearings of lower sizes also falls into low-cost low cost category for vehicle engines, appliances, and fractional horsepower motors. And in bigger sizes for high loads and high speeds, such as utilized with auxiliary oil supply systems, including cooling and filtration, and also expensive oil film bearings are more popular. Next book. Next are the maintenance and life. In some cir circumstances, maintenance and life are variables that must be taken into account when choosing a bearing type. Like with the exception of cyclic stress, when the bearing metal may become fatigue, fluid film bearings that operate with parts separated by, by an oil film require little to no maintenance and have an essential infinite life. And in contrast, Rolling element bearings are a limited life due to fatigue because of the repeated cyclic strain on the cont contacts. And next one are the grease. Rolling bearing maintenance may at most call for a occasional grease replacement or purging. The supply systems need periodic care for an oil change, a new filter, or a general cleaning when oil is used to lubricate sliding or rolling bearings. So, sa economics, we must consider yung tatlo, the cost, maintenance, and life para makapili ka kung ano nga ba ang bearing type na kukunin mo or pipiliin mo. That's all for economics po. So, that's all for our report. Thank you po. So, ayun. So, thank you, Group 1, sa presentation nyo. So, bale, na-discuss dito talaga yung parang ano na, intro ng tribology. Then, ang problema pala is 15 minutes na lang. So, anyways, um, next week, or next meeting pala, rather, magpapakus muna si Group 1 bago mag- present si group 2 para dire-diretso dire na. Okay. Ngayon kasi uh, 15 minutes hindi ko na pag start si group 2 kasi magse-set up pa yon. 15 minutes na din yan. Bale since face to face naman yon. Feel ko wala masyadong delay na mangyayari tulad ng nangyari kanina na napag-start tayo medyo late na. So next meeting pa ko agad tayo. So sabi ko nga Bahala kayo kung paano yung style ng pakus ninyo. Um, it's up to you kung paano siya gagawin yung pakus. Then, after nun, edi, or habang nag-quiz, pwede na mag-prepare si group 2 din dun. Para wala tayong masyadong delay at target matapos yung presentation ni group 2. Then, pakus ni, edi pala. Then, next meeting yung online ay presentation na ni group 3. Then, kapag may oras pa, makapag-start na rin ako ng discussion ko. Then, after noon, yung face-to-face noon, hindi mga pa-exam na lang ni group 2 tsaka ni group 3. So, yun. Since, ano na naman din, plan na rin naman tayong magagawa dito sa 14 minutes na advanced time, hindi may as well dismiss ko na kayo na maaga. Then, again, so parang thank you sa group 1 for presenting. So, nagkaroon ng aberya kanina, nakala ko yung tapos na, hindi pa pala. Pero, yun, nagawa naman ang paraan. So, yun, commended, and thank you. Next meeting ulit. Yun po. Thank you, sir. Thank you po, sir. Love you. Thank you.